Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to our 8.3 tier list for casters. In this video, we're going to be ranking all of the relevant casters, and then going to be placing them inside of our tier list. For our ranking system, we're going to be having five different tiers, S+, S, A, B, and C tier. We'll be giving our reasoning behind these rankings, and the strengths and weaknesses of each spec then even giving you some strong compositions. Let's get straight into it. To kick this off, let's start from the top with the best of the best casters that are going to be making it into our S plus tier. Starting off with Fire Mage, mages are no stranger to our S plus tier, but now is the time of the Fire Mage. Fire brings some of, if not the highest instant burst damage in the game. Picking up things like Lucid Major and the Hyper Fred Risk Guards from Mechagon make Fire's instant burst just out of this world. Although their instant burst revolves heavily around cooldowns, you can still create pressure and force interrupts with the constant threat of Greater Pyroblast, meaning Fire Mages are always going to be a threat. And of course, Mage is known for their crowd control. And Fire has even more, with the addition of Dragon's Breath helping to assist you in landing crowd control. Despite not having two blocks, Fire also gets the safety net of Cauterize, meaning even in those risky situations, you're still going to have that fallback. For a caster, mages are known for their mobility, having two charges of Shimmer, which enables them to cast and even reposition whilst doing so. Lastly, Fire also brings three schools of magic two for crowd control and one for damage, meaning it's hard for them not to be able to do anything at all during the games. Fire's weaknesses are few and far between, but their most inherent weakness is their lack of a slow. This can really play detriment to scoring kills, making them heavily reliant on teammates in order to connect to targets. This is also the case for stuns. Obviously, Mage hasn't had a stun for some time now, but this is even more reliant as Fire, as it makes it a lot easier bursting on a stun target. Composition-wise, Fire has a lot of good options, the best being our Impala right now, but Fire Mage, Destro Healer, and Warrior Mistweaver Monk are the ones that stand out to me. And moving on to our second and final addition to our S Plus tier, we're going to be of course having Destruction Warlocks. Destruction is just insane right now, being one of the tankiest casters by a long shot, having demon armor and their mastery, making them hard to kill for all classes. Combine this with just how much of a threat they are, with the sheer amount of damage Chaos Bolt is capable of, and you're in a bit of a catch-22. Hit them, and they don't die. Don't, and they one-shot you, making them a constant threat throughout the game. And that's without their cooldowns. Once you see Infernals or Demon Soul, it's panic time. These two combined are some of the scariest defensive cooldowns in the game right now, and require immediate respect. Also, it's often underestimated how much constant damage destruction is capable of. Playing certain specs, you can deal very good consistent damage, even if you can't get your Chaos Bolts off. And to top it all off, Destruction also has an abundance of crowd control, having Coil, Spammable Fear, Shadow Fury, and even Roots. Okay, that's enough of the strengths, let's cover their weaknesses. Destruction's number one weakness is their mobility. Chasing enemies when they run, which they will, is not Destruction's forte. You're also incredibly vulnerable to being shut down. Teams can line of sight, come out deal damage, and then run again before you're even able to retaliate a lot of the time. Composition-wise, Destruction has the option to pair up with either Casters or Melee, with a few standout compositions being Fire Mage Destro, Frost Mage Destro, Windwalker Destro, and even Shadow Play. Okay then, that's it for our S plus tier. Dropping now to our S tier, now this is the tier for those specs that are still strong but they just don't have the strengths both our S plus tier casters do. Going into our S tier, we've got Frost Mage first. Weaker compared to their fire counterpart, although they still bring some unique strengths. Frost Mage has access to great slows, having almost all of their damaging abilities applying a very strong slow. Combine this with their multitude of roots, and it can be incredibly frustrating to connect to them as a melee. And of course, having Shimmer allows them to reposition and cast, resulting in some strong mobility. Frost actually does deal very strong AoE cleave, 
making them strong when up against double melee cleaves for instance. Also having very good instant burst damage, but again, nothing compared to fire. Frost's major drawbacks though are their lack of consistent pressure. There is no big threat like Greater Pyroblast for instance. They also require a lot more help securing crowd control as they lack the extra crowd control from Dragon's Breath. Moving on to compositions, Frost plays a lot of similar comps to Fire, just preferring Resto Droid or Priest Healers. Now Frost Mage was our only addition to the S tier. Dropping down to A tier now, we've got Elemental Shaman. Elementals are one of the highest burst damage casters in the game right now, with Urshock once stacked being capable of dealing some ridiculous instant damage, taking enemies by surprise, and they can do this quite regularly. Elemental also brings some great utility to teams, having both Grounding and Tremor Totem at their disposal, whilst also being the only caster to have a short cooldown interrupt which can in turn be very disruptive. Shamans also bring Ghost Wolf, which can make it difficult to, for certain melee to connect, giving them very good mobility and kiting potential. They also have the strengths of having multiple schools of magic, having frost, nature, and even fire spells at their disposal. Although Elemental suffers from the inherent weakness of primarily lacking consistent damage, Elemental, outside of Lasso and Earthshock, really doesn't do that much at all. They also are very susceptible to dying inside of stuns. Classes like rogues do incredibly well at locking down an elemental shaman and killing them off fast. This also comes down to their lack of defensives, having only astral shift and a long cooldown pet wall as tools they can use to survive, meaning once they're down, elementals are very vulnerable targets. As for compositions, elemental shamans only really have one good comp right now, which is fire mage elemental, played with a Mistweaver or Holy Paladin. Although Windwalker Elemental and even Warrior Elemental have seen some play. Dropping down now to our B tier, these classes are really, really struggling right now for numerous reasons. Changes to the meta, nerfs, and just lack of comps makes them overshadowed by our previous casters. Our first addition going into our B tier is going to be Shadow Priest. What Shadow does bring is crowd control, having Psychic Scream, Psychic Horror, and even Silence with the ability to pick up Mind Bomb. This crowd control can be great at enabling strong melee classes like Windwalker or Rogue to easily score kills, further bringing good utility in the form of Life Swap and even Grip to help your team out even more so. They are also very durable, having many defensives to rotate through and all on relatively short cooldowns. Shadow's Priest damage can also not be underestimated in some scenarios, Shadow Priests are capable of dealing insane spread pressure when left to free cast. Although Shadow really struggles right now due to the meta, Shadow suffers heavily from being countered by certain classes, namely Mistweavers and Holy Paladins. With the high amount of self-healing classes like Death Knight, Windwalkers and Demon Hunters, it can also be very hard to deal any noteworthy damage. Combine all this with the fact Shadow has seen numerous nerfs in recent patches and just how vulnerable they are to being shut down and you can see why Shadow just isn't making the cut anymore. Despite their weaknesses, Shadow still has some viable compositions, namely Shadow Play and RPS, but Windwalker Shadow Priest can still also work to decent ratings. Still inside of our B tier, our next addition is going to be Balanced Druid. Balanced Druids have quite honestly seen better days, being amongst the weakest casters in our tier list, although you can still have success and fun with the class, so let's go ahead and take a look at their strengths. Balanced Druid most notably has some great crowd control chains, if the enemy isn't a druid that is. Having Mass Entanglement combined with Beam followed up with Cyclones can keep a healer crowd controlled for extended periods of time. They are also a very big threat if enemies stay out in the open during Incarnation. Once popped, Boomkins can deal huge amounts of damage. Also, when not forced into bear form, they have multiple schools of magic to toy with, being able to do good, good damage on both schools. And lastly, they offer some decent team utility, having decent off hills when specced into restoration affinity, and even innovate for your healer. In regards to weaknesses, Balance suffers quite heavily when facing melee cleaves, who can force you into bear form, reducing your damage tenfold. They also, like Shadow Priest, suffer due to classes self-healing or healers like Mistweavers and Paladins healing through your dots with ease. And they've also been recently hit with the nerf bat for PvE reasons, seeing a damage reduction to both of their dots. However, Root Beam makes Boomkins viable when paired up with the right partner, with Boonkins having success playing with a Hunter, Windwalker, or Elemental Shaman. And finally, we've reached our final tier, C tier. These last two specs honestly are not that viable, but that doesn't mean you can't play them and still have fun at certain ratings. Affliction used to be the king of Dots, 
and spread pressure, and honestly their dots still do decent damage, they've at least got that going for them. Having the ability to unload unstable afflictions in conjunction with Dark Glare and Demon Soul even does some decent single target burst damage. And of course, Warlocks have Fear, Coil and even Shadow Fury. What it is though that makes them so low on our tier list is just how weak they are when trained. Unlike Destro, Affliction's Mastery increases their dot damage, instead of reducing the damage they take. This means they're incredibly squishy when trained down. And I mentioned Affliction has decent spread pressure. This is done via their Curse of Agony. If you face a comp able to decurse, this is going to drop substantially, completely gimping their damage. Also, unlike Destro, you've only got access to one tier of magic meaning you're very vulnerable to kicks. Whilst I wouldn't recommend playing Affliction right now, some compositions you could try are Affliction Windwalker and Affliction Frostmage. And our final class for our C tier, and for this tier list, is going to be Demonology Warlock. Demonology is like all Warlock specs, so they're very disruptive. Having access to curses like Curse of Tongues, Curse of Weakness, and even Axe Toss from your pet, and a spammable fear of course. They also are the only Warlock specs deal with Soul Link, giving you a perma 20% damage reduction throughout the game, although you do lack Demon Armor versus pure physical damage dealers. Demo also has very surprising single target burst damage, when they can get up their demonic tyrant. Furthermore, they even bring a small mortal strike effect from their pet. However, Demo is riddled with weaknesses, primarily their damage, or well, lack of. If Tyrant isn't up, then Demo isn't going to be doing any damage at all. Demonology also has to cast all of their spells, meaning interrupts can be extremely troublesome. And lastly, how reliant they are on their pet. Kill a Demonology's pet and delay the recast, and he's pretty much finished. For compositions, Demonology works semi-decent when paired up with Survival Hunters, Warriors, or even Windwalkers. Just good luck finding somebody who won't ask you to respect Destro. Alright then guys, that's going to be it for our best PvP casters for 8.3. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out both our healer and melee tier list coming out shortly.